it's not that uh, it's a machine, it's a technology, anybody can buy it and then and can take it to industry. It's, it's something which we have built it over the last four years, four and a half years, and the journey is continuing because it's just the beginning uh, uh, for this uh, for this group to operate there. If you do the uh, uh, the core competence mapping, we we also did uh, that what we need to do for the competitive advantage of of this organization uh, across the various locations of ASI and uh, was from this group of people in India. And you were really surprised because we were competing with people from Japan. We were thinking that probably Japan would be the top. Over the years, maybe some some places the competency does develop, and people in India were actually very fearful. It's like do or die situation. Deliver or we don't or, or we don't deliver. Because if there is a small mistake there, the whole product comes back from Japan. So the risks are very high. But then when we do uh, this uh, competency uh, mapping, we found that, that we have people, we, we have those resources, we have built up those, those resources over the last four and a half years to be what we wanted to be and what we are today. Courses to look at our capabilities and competencies. Uh, I think uh, 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 this group delivered something which was unbelievable. My team, I am very you know happy that in a shortest span, this this team delivered a product in the market in US, a product in the market in Japan. Uh, uh, we got the award for the best facility across ASI. So this was like we give targets to your people. You need to drive them hard that they can do. And once they they get those dreams, yes, we can do it. I think no, nobody can stop them. If you look at what we do in the whole processes, we take decisions. It's basically the talent, the people, they take decisions in the capital equipment, skills of employees, creating those brand names, financial resources, talent, because the process is developed at the shop level. And this is what it is that those core competencies, those, those, those people, with their capabilities uh, which are responsible for uh, delivering what the business requires. So from the organization point of view, these are those unique skills and knowledge which makes, it's not only technology, it's, it's a combination of those resources. Now how do we really run those resources in, 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 a, in a fashion of an orchestra? that delivers what we are looking for. It's profit. We realize it's not a profit. We, we need to be there in those markets for which we don't have a premise, for example, markets like, Aust uh, markets like Africa. Uh, so this was an opportunity for us, and we made that pro you know, project successful. Uh, Great capabilities because they are not possessed by many others. Many other companies are there in India, there are <coughs> locations like Shakhtar. So, uh, this is the same area. You are looking at uh, some of the causes for this, uh, how they cannot be imitated. And some of these causes are not known to many, many pharmaceutical industries. How you do it? It's the same machines, or maybe some more uh, expensive or more technology advanced machines, but then they can be copied. What is it that you do, what others are not able to do it? That that brings uh, a capability in an organization which is difficult to imitate. It is not impossible, but it's difficult to imitate. But of course, those interpersonal relationships, trust and uh, friendship among managers, suppliers, including our colleagues from Japan, we invited them here, that be a part of this group and show what you what you need, and sometimes we feel that we were doing the best, but we were not because our perception was being very good. They were saying, no, 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 this is the basic. We are the baseline. Probably you need to do much more. So, kind of a more driver for the people, more demand on your people that yes, you can do it, and that's where we 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 we, we experience that we could do it what we wanted. Point of view, our thought leaders in HR, we look at uh, the culture and the quality of work life in an organization. We to ask these questions: How do employees spend their time? How do they interact with each other that we should improve upon? 
Our employees empowered in your working, are they able to take your decision or every now and then they are, they are coming to the leader that should I do this, should I, should I not? What is the pre predominant leadership style of the managers? And how do employees advance within the organization, their succession planning and, uh, and, and, and their future in the organization? So what's next for uh, into a line function, into a manufacturing? Area into supply chain management, into areas like uh, uh, even uh, procurement, supply chain management. They are, they are moving into to understand what the business need is. Do you know your your way around the profit and loss account of your business? Do you know how to read the PNL uh, account or to read the balance sheet in the organization? What contributes to the balance sheet of an organization? Do your colleagues look? To you for wise advice and counsel. So when the, when the times are tough, are they coming to you? That means that yes, you you are really a thought leader for them. You can really show them the way. Do you have the skills and resources you need to help your organization change, grow, and prosper, and also contribute to enhancing the business uh, of your organization? How do you keep track of social trends and legislative changes? The social trends, you know, you've seen that in the law and gay buying for the programs to address them. These are the questions, <coughs> this kind of a habit, this kind of a business orientation within their group so that they can read what a business requires and they can align themselves with the needs of the business. Do you know what your CEO and your business require from you and how well you are meeting those business real needs? So that's where a thought leader needs to spend time a large portion of the time. Of course, their team members down the line need to spend time on the basic nitty-gritties of the business. But on the top level, these are the these are the areas where uh, an HR thought leader needs to spend time. Of course, from the balance court point of view, you must have seen out of your own performance management system that it's not only financial or customer or the process developments which are contributing, a large portion is actually contribution from the people and I am a very strong believer of this that what we are is because of what our people are. Where we are going is because of and also the people in general in the organization and people play a very significant role I think uh, as a group uh, I am very happy to interact with you today on, on this uh, at this forum and uh, uh, an organization head looks for from an organization uh, and what an uh, CEO looks from the HR role in, 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 in today. Thank you very much for this uh, patient today. It's all about people. All right. Today, the perspective which I'm uh, going to give you is all about a startup. Usually, startups drive on informal autonomy, empowerment, and above all, I think it's the passion to make a difference. And also what you call as, you know, the so-called Jugaad management. That element is also very much uh, seen in the startups. Now, a little bit about uh, technologies, green chemical technologies. And interestingly, we didn't have any product idea at all. There were stray ideas. There was passion. And it's not about altogether a new product. It's about making difference on the existing product but a great difference. I'm not in a position to name the product today because we are still in the startup stage. But then we have commenced our operations only last month and we are there to make a difference. Well, we uh, are actually about 150 people now uh, and located at three locations in Hyderabad. We have two locations focus on uh, product development of the manufacturing unit about 60 kilometers away from uh, Vishaka Patna, which is Pindi Dimavara. Most of you belonging to this part of the job uh, would be familiar with it. And we have a, a small, uh, you know, garage kind of a corporate office where uh, it's a little better than garage, uh, about 15 people. Since I uh, was talking to you about 
Now we have looked at what sustainability means, uh, sustainability means to us. Well, I think, uh, you know, sustainability has uh, many definitions, but one of those definitions is that, you know, while we keep using resources, we use it prudently and in such a way that we leave behind enough for the next generations to enjoy it. So, in order to align that core and draw meaning out of what sustainability means to us in a business environment, we said that we are environmentally and socially conscious and our interests revolve around that. Not only interests, but on how to align our practices. That's the challenge. The cultural focus is the challenge. If we, if we are saying that innovation is going to make a difference, then how would you know, people management, how would the perspective of HR would help sustain that knowledge? Now, I guess it's not only about startup that I'm talking about sustainability. In each large corporation also tries to grow, tries to sustain, you know, maintain its competitive position in the market. Right? I think none of us can uh, refute that. But some of these aspects, when a large corporation starts its own new business unit or embarks on a growth initiative, they will be very helpful. Now, also, sustainability means long term perspective. Uh, we are talking about sustaining the thing over the period, whether it is profitability, whether it is retention of people, whether it is building the talent. I think a long-term perspective is extremely important. And what do we mean by growth? As we grow, we have choices. I mean, how do we set as businesses our targets? We want to achieve X, Y, Z sales over five years. We want to be such and such an organization. We want to be number one, number two, whatever. But then, will that be sustainable? How do I sustain that? How do I sustain my growth? So I think inclusion is one of those elements we thought is extremely important. Inclusion means including the people in our growth. Making them aware of what are those elements and how do we as a corporation intend to do. So uh, when you look at the ground, what does it, how does it translate to a worker on the shop floor? How does he have resources? And when we talk about uh, strategy, HR, I think building HR philosophy at a startup stage is all about setting the cultural attributes. You know, those are the seeds which we sow on which the organization grows. Well, aligning the entire HR philosophy to the organizational goal is something which is very simple, straightforward, and I don't have to stress too much about it. That's the, that's the role of the strategic HR in our perspective. Now, when I say organization goals, it doesn't really uh, stop at the numbers. It actually talks about what are those cultural attributes. I am focusing on cultural attributes because that's the one which will actually give us traction on numbers. And how do we do that? There's a focus on talent and talent acquisition, looking at those critical competencies on which the organization wants to sustain. Now, if you are saying that innovation, for example, is what sustains the energy in the startup or also sustains it economically, you know, uh, if that's the, that's the stated uh, attribute, then we need to look at talent and provide them an uh, environment where innovation sustains. So there are many things on the ground which we can do. Celebrate small wins, advertise achievements. These are very elementary aspects and which need to be done. And especially in our environment at a startup, we have been always practicing that. And when you look at how things happen, this is all about cultural focus. And how do we make that happen? I think Two elements which are extremely important are leadership, clarifying what kind of leadership we want to craft. Whether it's a hierarchical type of behavior, 
whether it is an inclusion, whether it is an empowered culture, I think that becomes extremely important. It's easier said than done. When we come to uh, the next few slides, I think I'll give you a perspective on what challenges we are facing. Now, if you talk about what are those key ingredients of sustainable competitiveness, I think any organization needs to have a strategy on product. What is that you're going to do? What is it? What is your line of business? What products you're going to make? I think that's that's very elementary. That's what part of it. Which actually feeds into how you want to develop the organization. How you want to design the organization. Whether it is org structure, whether it is management processes, and which then feeds into the management culture. You know, the way we develop an organization actually determines what kind of management culture we institute in our organization. So let's briefly talk about each one of those in context of ecology. We said that as far as the product strategy is concerned, we said that the goal will be price minus. Now, this is a very challenging thing, but then it drives efforts towards sustainability. You know, if you have to be always competitive or exit, if you cannot be price minus, we exit. Now, if you have to be price minus, you have to be competitive always. And if you have to be competitive always, all your processes, all your management processes, will have to be designed in order to enable that. Now that's the linkage. And when we say price minus, it's also about finding new ways of being there, being there in the market. And that's what exactly sustainability means to us. Then if you translate it, it's actually acquiring mastery over production processes because we are in the business of development and manufacturing of chemicals and it also encompasses R&D through to manufacture and of course all the elements of uh, operations management funded to the And as you look at the name ecology, you must be wondering what's, what's, what, what kind of name is this and a chemical company having, you know many people have asked me whether it is, uh, you know, is it an IT company because we have named it as technology. Technology. We thought it is logical to be eco-friendly, so uh, because it's also economic. And when we address the environmental footprint, when you address, let's say you talk about these days uh, in parlance of green chemistry, people talk about key factors. It's about key factor in the sense how much of waste do you produce per kg of product you produce. So. When you, when you talk about that, when your focus is to address the environmental footprint, then the economy gets addressed. <coughs> now, I am talking a little bit about product strategy because the entire processes have to be over and around in order to enable this, uh, this strategy to actually act in reality. You know, we will have to make sure that life cycle management is addressed. Life cycle management if it is not there, I don't think we will actually address the price minus thing or not. So in terms of uh, organization development, the elementary processes which I am talking about as far as the HR processes are concerned, whether it is induction, whether it is EMS, that remains very generic. But what's important to us is indoctrination. We also sometimes call it as green doctrination. In our context, we call it as green doctrination and try and see how we can indoctrinate people when they come in to understand the product strategy. That's, that's the challenge. Of course, talent management, acquisition, deployment, I'll talk about it. How we have gone about you know, acquiring talent. You need, because in a startup, you need experience as well in order to convert a great idea into action. Also, you need great people. <coughs> now, I think uh, Mr. Lama also talked about HR as a business partner, not only as a service provider, 
it's not only about personnel management, it's about actually integrating HR into business planning and even operations planning. Therefore, it's necessary that, you know, as HR professionals, we understand the business and what the demands of the business are and also relate it very, in a detailed manner to what the strategy is. It's all about converting strategy into action, which is again all about execution. And we have made, right from day one, a leadership team responsible for talent management. Talent management as a process is run in the organization right from day one. And that actually determines what the management culture is all about. Now, that, when we talk about growth, I talked about whether it's a reckless growth or whether it is a balanced growth. If we approach it in a balanced way, ambitions are there, but then not happiness. It has to actually be sustainable. If we have to uh, make a difference through innovation, then we have to be very careful that we actually do not overstep those not only near statutory requirements, but then Align with our mission. So alignment with the vision. So there is a balanced focus on growth and sustainability. As far as management processes are concerned, I think I'll not talk a great deal about it because these are, you know, at least from CEO's perspective, these are things which are run of the mill kind of things. We will have to do it. But how do we approach that is what is more important. Now that is where it is less bureaucratic. You know, that's the challenge of growth, when organizations actually morph into large corporations, bureaucracy sets you know, There is inertia which, uh, which is setting. Even in growth plans, even when you start a new business unit, when a large corporation starts a new business unit, the cultural aspects influence a great deal. So you may want to look at it from growth perspective. For those of you who are actually representing large corporations and have growth plans, if you want to grow your new business, then what kind of cultural attributes do you need to bring in in order to you know, put it on traction? So, there are many ways of doing it. And also it is inclusively created, all these processes. What does business planning or what does a strategic planning mean to a worker on the shop floor? How does it actually give him some kind of meaning, some kind of you know, sense of involvement. Now that is what we need to actually do. And that is where you know, HR can actually innovate. I am not an HR professional, but then I think you as HR professionals can actually innovate. So, the stated thing is that it is inclusively created. Now, whatever I am talking about, some of it is intent, some of it is work in progress, some of it could actually morph as we go along building. The values which we are framed actually are connecting to daily life. Now, for example, frugality is one of our values. We don't have a travel policy. It's up to people to choose the mode of transport while transacting business if they have to travel without compromising on productivity and reasonable comfort, not luxury. So, people can choose their own mode of transport, people can choose their own ways of where do they want to stay, whether they want to stay in a five-star hotel or whether they want to stay in a service apartment, it's up to people. And in this context, what becomes important is role modeling. You know, leaders will have to do what they say. So again, I am focusing on the cultural aspect where the HR can play a very, very important role. Now, a little bit about uh, the mission, how our organization mission, you know, uh, could be realized. Or how do we make sure that we remain on track as far as the organization mission is concerned. Now, our mission is transforming industrial manufacturing to green chemistry. So that's the focus. Green chemistry is the focus, manufacturing is the focus. And needless to say that people focus is central to the entire thing. And we're talking about acquisition of talent and continually building those skills. What are those key skills which are required in order to stay on course? And what are those 
few attributes which we look into each individual. Now it actually requires passion for sustainability. When you, it's a stated, uh, you know, strategy that price minus is a stated strategy, then someone who doesn't have passion for sustainability cannot actually think in that direction. So that's all about how do we indoctrinate or indoctrinate people and bring them on track. So it's all about training. It's all about role modeling. Also on innovation. Great ideas need discipline and execution. So there's a great deal of focus on execution as well. Now there are three elements which we focus on in order to accomplish the mission. One is the organization. Is how do we remain as a learning organization? Now we have talked a great deal about cultural focus. But the point I want to make is autonomy is extremely important. <coughs> is given to a great extent, I'm sure we can earn their discretion here. That extra effort, that's the, that extra effort actually makes the difference and helps us remain on course. So, now, it's, it's, it's really, you know, kind of OHT. OHT means overhead transmission. For, it can be a puzzle for uh, uh, each of the HR professionals because in different environments, there could be different ways of uh, having this done on the ground. So on the body part, I mean this is this is something which is uh, extremely important and I'm quite personally very passionate about this. The whole high performance process, what we call as HPWS, we have actually partnered with uh, Mr. Dean Dayal and CEO in order to help us how to build a high performance work system. Now we have constituted ourselves as teams. Now hierarchy is there for governments. It's there. It is, you know, the levels are there. But then they are few. But hierarchical behavior is what we do not want to know. So that's that's the element which we need to focus on. Now you must be wondering what are these all you know T's around. Now DCT means Development and commercialization. So there is a focus on commercialization. It's not about only developing great products in laboratory and sitting pretty on it. So again, there is a team. It's a cross-functional. You bring in all the aspects of the business into each of these teams. And when we talk about SLT, it's a side leadership team. Now, how do you constitute it, and what do you expect from the team? is important and that's the difference where each of the organizations can make for themselves. And we are talking about HST, which is a hand holding team. As a startup, there is a challenge. You don't have experience. You know, if you want to get started, a great idea, you want to monetize it as fast as possible. But there are many ways of growing it. Go to the market, you hire very skilled people, you know, you have uh, a ready talent, pay them get them, put your product on the market, start earning profit. Simple. But then, I don't think that is what is sustainable. When you have looked at